special program on Ukraine, and it was the 25th anniversary of the accident in 2010. So we went there and we covered the 25th anniversary. And as a part of that, stumbled across this reality that there were people living inside the exclusion zone, which is immediately captivating. <laughs> You always kind of wonder about the last specimen of a dying species and how lonely that must be. As you can see, it's a, a beautiful place, and um, the villain in the story is invisible, mm -hmm. which is yeah. a challenge for a filmmaker, really, yeah. because, um, and, and, you know, so what we knew all along is that the tension of being in the zone had to be somehow captured, you know, right. and so uh, is you, you kind of, as the film goes in and out from focusing on the women and what their reality is and then this sort of satellite of characters and stories going on around them. And the zone itself really, um, we felt had to be a character, you know, because... It is, it's, it's a huge character. It looms large over everything. Yeah. yeah, so, but yeah, walking that line between the bucolic reality mm -hmm. and, the, and the humor and sort of warmth of the of the yeah. women and the beauty of the place, it's, it's become an unlikely wildlife refuge, actually, um, because the absence of humans uh, was a greater boon to the wildlife mm -hmm. radiation uh, than, than the detriment of radiation. Right. So it's a funny equation. For, uh, you know, a total of like 18 days um, and lots of restrictions. You can only go in for a certain amount of days. You're in at 9 a.m., got to be out by 5, you go through radiation. You have a Geiger counter at all times, as you saw, the character Vita was our monitor yeah. or guide and um, and then when you leave the zone you also go through radiation checks I think it's fascinating that the the video game the stalkers that they they that that's okay somehow that's <laughs> oh wait who said it was okay uh, no no but somehow in their mind <laughs> oh yeah. like yeah this yeah. is a good idea well um, <laughs> The, it's a con I, I'm fascinated by the stalker yeah. story, and it, they were a difficult story to get, and a, and a difficult story to make work in the film because you can see they're on, they're odd man out for a long time, mm -hmm. but about three quarters of the way through, hopefully it worked, where you know you realize they are kind of representing the next generation, yeah. and as the women die out, really what's going to be left? The wolves and the stalkers and right. and, and the people building the right. sarcophagus. Right. So. Um, uh, and also, they're, you know, at first blush, it's like they're these rebellious teenagers imitating a video game. Um, but their story actually is more nuanced. Many of them were, were you know, wanted to see this place mm -hmm. that had really defined their, their generations. I mean, their, their fathers and their grandfathers and grandmothers mm -hmm. and everything had, you know, it's a great tragedy that's devastated the entire region for, you know, a couple generations now, and they had never seen it. Right. Did you give them any training or coaching? No, yeah. not at all. Um, they were naturals. <laughs> um, uh, you know, but they were they were just so uh, warm and hospitable and happy to talk. In fact, our bigger problem was getting them to stop talking sometimes. <laughs> um, but they were just, you know, really, really lovely and, and kind of, you know, refreshingly camera, you know, it's it's not it, you know there there's not a lot of camera crews running around there, there in, there isn't a lot of sort of consciousness about TV and cameras that you mm -hmm. might find in most parts of the world right now so yeah. they it, they were they were able to just be themselves it strikes me that they're not afraid of anything <laughs> that's what they say yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that as um, as Hannah said uh, radiation doesn't scare me starvation right. does and for me that's another one of the moments in the film that kind of sums it all up yeah. <laughs> Вот это все мое. Все мое. Прощай, Родин, завтра встретимся. There's a new company town about out uh, about a half hour outside the zone. Mm -hmm. And it's called Slavich and um, they have a film festival. <laughs> and it really is one in every town. We have submitted <laughs> and um, they um, but what's great is you know even even showing the film in Kiev which we will do eventually the women won't go there. I mean, as you can see, they're yeah. tied to home. They're like, they're not interested in, in, um, in, in leaving. And so, but that town, which is only a half hour away, is where I think they can come see the screening, which we're really looking forward to. And it's going to be on the 30th anniversary of Chernobyl, which is next spring.